Hey guys, Log.Zip here, and today I'm making a video tutorial to show you something I have scripted recently uh, using a program uh, to do annotations for me. Uh, so I thought this might be useful for people that uh, are YouTubers or make YouTube videos and use annotations in their outros or the intros or what have you. And uh, I'm going to show you this. It is a script I wrote, and it, this is all being done in real time. I'm talking. This isn't sped up clip it in any way. And as you can see, uh, all of my annotations are basically creating themselves. Text is being filled in. You can see slowly that the annotations are actually being lengthened to the proper length. And even at the end here, you'll notice that my little subscribe area, it will automatically add that as well. So if we'll mouse over, you can see all the different spots where the annotations were placed. It's got the text there. And then when you click this, you click preview link, it will take you to my channel uh, and it will have the little subscribe notification pop up or whatever. Um, so a friend of mine, uh, Ant Venom, told me I should make a tutorial on this and I have decided to do that. So uh, the program you're going to need to write these scripts is actually called AutoHotKey and it's at www.autohotkey.com. It is a completely free program. It's open source. And so what you're going to do is download it. Um, it took me about an hour and a half to get through the learning curve to teach myself. But, you know, you'll install it, get all the installation done, and uh, I'll resume once uh, you've hit that step. Okay, so AutoHotKey is installed now, and um, we're actually not going to be really dealing with the program itself. We're actually going to be just using its help file. So let me type in AutoHotKey here. And there will be two different things, two different windows using the program that we will have open. And one is the AutoIt3 window spy and then the actual help file which is what I did to teach myself but I'll go ahead and give you the basics of what you're going to need for annotations it's it's really easy in fact I will bring up my annotations um, document it took me a while to toy with it to make it perfect so this is all it is uh, it's just a series of coordinates followed by commands so let's go back to my little test video right here and we will close out of some of the actually I'll just do it right here so um, yeah, it's, it's seriously just as simple as editing in the text and adding commands. So I will give you some basics right here. Here is the window, and there are going to be, um, I believe, four different commands you're going to want to mess with for annotations. Uh, the first is sleep, and that's simply a command that will uh, make the script wait a certain period of time before moving down to the next line. A click command simulates a mouse click. Mouse click drag simulates a click and drag and it lets you choose where to start the click and drag and where it ends. Send is the equivalent of typing in keys and then send input is just another form of that as well. So uh, we will get into it. Now the window info window spy is what you're going to have open to determine where the coordinates are. Now as you can see here the coordinates you're going to be w wanting to look at are the ones next to inactive window as in in the active window. So um, when we click on the window we want to use and by the way have your window maximized or in a position where it always is because if you misalign the window if you create the macro right over here and then you use in the, in the windows over here when you try and execute it it'll start clicking over here so what I usually do is maximize my screen so that I don't run into that issue at all right so uh, you can see the inactive window uh, uh, coordinates they're changing as I move my mouse and these are the coordinates that correspond with the little pointy part of the mouse itself. So uh, the first step would be obviously to click to put your mouse over the add annotation button and then write down or just memorize the coordinates that show up. Right there is 9, 970 and then 311. And then you'll, you'll just make a new script. You'll just open up notepad or your note, your text editor. You'll put down the coordinates you see. I usually put a sleep command at the front so that it allows some uh, time for me to click into the active window to run the program itself. So once you have the coordinates down, mine are slightly different because, you know, there's, but this is, this coordinate corresponds with clicking the annotation. You can just make it click and then new line and that will stimulate the next click. So 966312 corresponds with around here. And then the next coordinates I had on my notepad is me clicking spotlight. And what that will do is it will open up the spotlight as you see here. And then the next command is as simple as, it, this is the mouse click drag. And what I did for this, was I made, uh, here's how, how, how the command itself works. So mouse click drag is the name of the command. L or R will simulate either a left or a right click. Here's your first X coordinates, your first Y coordinates, uh, where you want the click to start. 
and then your your second x coordinates and your second y coordinates where you want the drag to finish. So my first x and y coordinates would correspond to clicking right here and then the second x and y coordinates would correspond to this new spot that I dragged it to. So for each little clickable annotation you want, uh, you're going to need two sets of click drag mouse. One for the little top left corner that you're dragging and then one for the second one. So this command right here corresponds with the bottom right of this annotation and then again first X and Y click the click and drag and then this is where the second X and Y was and now so you've got your first X and Y second X and Y now down here you'll notice that there's an additional number at the end and that is the speed at which uh, the mouse will move now when I, I only add speed for moving this part of the annotation when I didn't add the speed it defaults to zero which tries to move it super fast but these parts, the little areas where you add text, are a little bit finicky. So I put the speed to about 18, and it makes the mouse slow down. And it'll allow it to more accurately place the annotation text where you designate it. So um, now the rest of this command is just you know click here, click there, drag there, drag there. The next command I want to go in a little bit of depth about is the send command. And the send command, as I explained, is basically a command that will simulate mouse or keyboard presses on the keyboard. So uh, having it up in these brackets will uh, simulate pressing the up arrow key on your keyboard. So what I did is simply make a click coordinate at these coordinates right here, the, the minute zone of my annotations, and then I simulate pressing an up key, which extends my annotation as you saw right here. It took it all the way from that to that. Now since my annotations never change at the end of each of my videos, I can keep that at a consistent length each time so it, it's not going to matter what video I'm doing it on. Your results may vary with that. You'll have to toy around with it itself. These annotation coordinates and such are going to be different for everybody because people have got clickable annotations in different spots. Now uh, the same basic uh, principle will work for adding text. Once I place the annotation for my, for example, my Twitter icon, it's, it's roughly right there, I have it I locate where the annotation is standard when I add it initially I make it click and drag again I add that speed decrease drag it right to the middle there and then I make it click on the coordinates over here and that's where I use my send command or send input in this case send inputs a little more reliable I would use the send in multiple chunks though if you've got a lot to put in and I just make it type in at log.zip and it puts it in just like that now one thing I want to stress is if you've got a rather large amount of text that you want to input, I'll give you an example here. I split up my subscription link into two different commands because I will show you what happens when I try and put it all in one. Sometimes it glitches out. That is also another reason to use the sleep command. If, if you're finding, if you can locate where your annotation script uh, glitches out each time, put a few sleep commands in between each one. It's as simple as sleep followed by the amount of milliseconds you want to place. So this is 150 milliseconds. I don't usually, I only need them really for the area down here where I'm starting to put in the text. But So I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, by messing up when you've got too much going on. Now I'm using a slightly different script here to show you what happens if you don't split up your text like I did. Occasionally if there's too much text going on in a single command it will glitch out and not show you the entire link. And this is an example of that. So when you see it trying to click in the stuff, it glitches out, it doesn't show the full text like it normally would, which is why you want to split it up like I showed in the previous clip just a moment ago. Now, if you're wondering how I got it to click, it was simply a matter of, once again, using coordinates to, once this annotation was already here, I made it click right here, I made it click the link button, had it wait for about 50 milliseconds, I, I wanted to make sure it had enough time to click this without running to the next step, uh, so I would use the sleep command in that instance, so I had it click the link, had it click here, did both send input commands, had it wait once more, and then have the script end from there. Once you've got those basic commands down and memorized, it's simply a matter of doing it manually yourself the first time. So yes, while it now does it automatically for me, I had to initially line these up perfectly the first time myself, uh, grab the coordinates for, for every single one I wanted to record, and then put it down in this little script I made. So finally, we can get into what I would recommend doing once you have created the script you want to uh, mess with. 
and that is just compiling the script so that you don't need to actually just click I don't know I just think it looks nicer you'll have it installed anyway so just clicking this will make it open but I compile it so you just find your auto hotkey file right click it choose compile script and wherever you save the AHK file it will create an executable for you now since I have it in my start key it's as simple as just clicking once and then quickly clicking one more time and now you can watch as it once again magically adds all of my annotations for me. I'm super proud of this and I'm happy to share it with any YouTubers that might f may find it interesting. If you do find it interesting or see yourself using this, I would appreciate it if you left a like on the video, possibly a favorite. And if you are interested in Minecraft videos, because I know that this is not going to be viewed by only people that play Minecraft, I make daily Minecraft uploads. So if that's something that interests you, feel free to subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. I'm Log.Zip, and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.